welcome you all to the session 8 chapter engineering material and their properties so in this session we are we are going to learn about non metallic material types so let's see the table of contents so first one is review of previous session 7 non ferrous metals non metallic material types rubber types properties and their application glass properties and their application ceramic properties and their application so review of previous session 7 non ferrous metals in the non ferrous metal we have learned the copper types of copper and bearing material so copper is a non ferrous metal non ferrous metal means the material which does not contain iron so these copper are widely used in industries because it is a soft malleable ductile and the color of copper is a reddish brown so its ore is called as copper pyrite the properties of coppers are high electrical conductivity high thermal conductivity good corrosion resistance high ductility and soft so these coppers are used in electrical wires cables conductors statues door knobs and sculptures so brass it is an alloy made up of copper and zinc so its properties are good bearing material good machinability good castability high resistance to corrosion so this brass can be machined easily and it can be cast castability means it can be make any models and it is good resistance to corrosion means the corrosions the pro, the material is not going to corrode easily applications where this brass are used used in pumps marine fittings walls tubes radiators ornaments bracing sole shoulder clock parts musical instrument bronze so it is a an alloy made up of copper and tin these are mainly used in gears propeller shaft condenser bolts pump component tubes air pumps slide valves and bushings so on the last material is bearing materials so this bearing is nothing but a structure supporting the rotating shaft so this part is in the between bearing surface and rotating shaft so the part is called a bearing and it is made up of two parts uh, hard and soft so these metals are used in copper base alloys lead base alloys tin base alloys cadmium base alloys so these are the materials of non ferrous metal now we will start with present session 8 session 8 that is non metallic material at the non metallic materials means a material which does not contain any metals so these materials are widely used in engineering field because of low density flexibility resistance to heat and electricity and also it is has low cost so some of the non metallic materials are 
closed in engineering field are rubber glass ceramics so what is rubber a rubber is a natural plastic it is also called as elastomer it is a polymer which has a tendency of elasticity or properties of elasticity so it is good resistance to corrosion of fluid abrasion heat alkalis and strong acid so let's know what are the types of rubber there are two types natural type and synthetic type natural type rubber are found in the latex of certain plants that means present in the rubber tree so the name of the rubber tree is avia brasiliensis so these trees are mostly found in brazil malaysia sri lanka and some part of the europe countries okay so these rubbers have soft and hard rubbers soft rubbers are used for in electrical insulation hard rubbers are used in belting that is power transmission belting and piping so latex of a sir latex means what here i'll show you a small clip you will come to understand what is the latex of the rubber now are two major types of rubber natural and synthetic rubber natural rubber was first discovered in the amazon in brazil seeds from the rubber tree were subsequently smuggled to britain and then exported to british colonies in asia since the late 20th century the majority of natural rubber has been produced in asia where there are vast rubber plantations synthetic rubber on the other hand is produced the world over natural rubber comes from the hevia brasiliensis tree which grows in tropical regions they typically reach 20 to 30 meters in height on rubber plantations and are able to produce commercial quantities of latex after about 5 years of age depending on climate and location the economical lifespan of a rubber tree is between 10 to 20 years but may extend past 25 in the hands of a skilled tapper and bark consumption levels it's worth noting that latex is different to tree sap heavier trees are tapped not more than once a day with a 2 to 3 day interval being the norm in countries such as sri lanka tapping usually takes place in the early hours of the morning the tapper uses a sharp curved shaped knife to shave a thin layer of fresh bark from the tree this exposes the latex vesicles the cut is typically done at 25 to 30 degrees to the horizontal as this exposes the maximum number of vesicles the same incision is reopened the next time by shaving off a small amount of bark the same area of the tree trunk may be exploited again after about 7 years the latex runs down and is collected in a cup each tree usually produces about a cup of latex per day and is collected later in the day latex normally flows from 1 to 3 hours after which time the vesicles become plugged with coagulant processing of natural rubber involves the addition of a dilute acid such as formic acid to the latex after coagulation the rubber is rolled to remove excess water a final rolling is then performed using a textured roller and the resultant rubber sheet is hung to be dried after this the rubber is ready for export and further processing this type of natural rubber accounts for around 90% of natural rubber production natural rubber is also used in a pure form in some applications in this case the latex tapped from the trees is concentrated using centrifuges removing water and other material 
natural rubber is used for making products such as glue, tires, toys, shoes, gloves, carpets, balloons, and medical and surgical disposables. At the end of a rubber tree's useful life, the wood is used to make handles, furniture, and souvenirs. Now coming to the next type of rubber is synthetic rubber. So synthetic rubber is nothing but a, it is an artificial rubber it is formed by chemical process. So the raw material required for producing synthetic rubbers are coke, limestone, petroleum, natural gas, salt, alcohol, sulfur, ammonia, and coal tar. So these are the raw material required to produce a synthetic rubber. So what are the properties of rubber? It is an elastic, it is strong and enough to hold, it is tough. It is highly impermeable to both water and air. Impermeable means what? There is no chance of passing water and air inside the rubber. It exhibits the great resistance to abrasion and tearing. So the wear and tear is controlled. So it is bad conductor of heat. Synthetic rubber offers great resistance to acid and petroleum product. So some of the properties like hardness, strength, abrasion, resistance can be modified by compounding technique. Means that by adding some chemicals to the a rubber, we can modify the properties of rubber. Next, vulcanizing the rubber, its mechanical properties can be improved. And last, electrical insulation is good. Electrical insulation is good. So what are the uses of rubber? So rubbers are used in thermal insulation, rain water and flexible tubing, belting of all types, tires and tubes, adhesive that is glue, hose pipes, printing rollers, gloves, gasket material and food weights. So these are the uh, product formed by the rubbers tires and uh, pipes, footwares, balloon, gloves, water pipes. Okay. Next, we move on to the next type of non-metallic material, glass. So glass is an inorganic, non-crystalline material produced by melting the sand. So sand contains a silicon. So this uh, raw material is heated at 1700 degrees Celsius and suddenly cooled and it is molded to a required shape. So how, it, how this glass are produced, we will see by the this chart. So this is an example of manufacturing a bottle, glass bottle. So first what it is done is a mixture is collected. That is mixtures are sand, soda ash, limestone, other chemicals. So these mixtures are placed in the furnace. Why we are going to place in the furnace? Because 
to heat to heat to give the heat to the mixture so at what temperature it is heated it is heated at 15 degree celsius so when the glass mixture is heated it becomes molten stage molten that is in the form of liquid so during this stage molten stage so the blowings are made why blowing is made because to get the desired product to get the desired product so our product is bottle or a glass container so this is how the glass is produced in other way of production of glass is by collecting the used glasses it may be a different type of colors of glasses so next stage is we are going to sort the color glasses you are going to separate the color glasses and it is washed because to remove the impurities present in the glasses after removing the impurities it is crushed it is made into small pieces and then it is melted in a furnace after reaching it in liquid form the products are made so this is how the glass recycling is done so let's see what are the properties it is a transparent it is a transparent means glass can is a transparent where it transmits the visible light the surface of the glass will scattered or reflect the light when the light passes on the glass it is going to scattered and reflects it is brittle in nature so it doesn't attack any chemically so it can be poured formed molded and extruded means it can be made in any form shape desired shape so it is has a high tensile strength glass has a high tensile strength so where the glass are used glass are used in packing tableware housing and buildings interior design and furniture application appliances and electronics in automotive field so in the packing in packing the jars of food bottles for drinks flacon for cosmetics and pharmaceuticals in tableware like drinking glass plates cups bowls in housing and building windowed packets conservatory insulation reinforcement structures interior design and furniture like mirrors partition tables sleeves lighting appliances oven doors cock tv computer screens and smartphones in automobile industries or automotive vehicle windscreen backlight and components of the windows okay this is are the applications of glasses now we will move on to the the examples see this is the bulkheads see this is are the elevations of the building and this is the bowl and these are the bottles made of glasses so next step is ceramics so it is an organic non metallic solid 
manufactured by baking natural occurring clays at high temperature after molding to shape so how the ceramics are formed by clay so raw material required for ceramic is clay so this clay are placed in the die which over the shape we required and it is placed inside the die and it is heated heated after heating it becomes a solidification it becomes a strong okay this is how it is ceramics products are formed in modern ceramics or ceramics ceramics means it is a, a mixture of ceramic and metal it is a combination of ceramic and metal it is a composite material they have the properties of both ceramic and metal alloys like example metal oxide carbides nitrate and silicates so these are the product of a ceramic bowl tea cups saucers plates so let's know what are the properties of ceramic so it is a brittle hard tough wear resistant electrically and thermally insulated it is non magnetic and chemically stable it has a high melting point low density they are brittle in nature and it has a zero ductility and also poor tensile strength so where this ceramics are used they are used in cutting tools refractory materials thermal insulator electrical insulator in spacecraft where the weight is low the ceramic of the weight will be low okay so now we will start with assessments that is multiple choice question the first question is glass is a mixture of what let's see the answer b metallic silicate so next question what changes are absorbed when the glass is heated when the glass is heated what is going to happen it become softer that means liquid state it will be in a liquid state of heating a glass it forms a liquid so it is softer third question rubber is extremely waterproof true or false the answer is true fourth question rubber latex is used for answer is c bonding rubber to wood fifth question synthetic rubber is also called as answer is c buna s sixth question which of the following property of ceramic answer is c resistant to corrosion seventh ceramics can conduct d none of the above answer is d 
ceramics bear the properties all the above ceramics materials are brittle true or false answer is true the word ceramic stands for which of the following meaning the word ceramic stands for which of the following meaning let's see answer b okay so these are the reference book elements of mechanical engineering by k r gopal krishna material science and engineering by ip singh thank you